a lot of people are going to have Norwich and Watford when they're doing their one to 24 as number one and two in whichever order. I'm sure Watford and Norwich fans won't care which order that would be if they do finish um, in the top two. Um, I've posited many, many times on this channel that the presence of parachute payments coupled with the absence of just chaos, just don't sack your manager, don't sell all your squad, keep it competent. You should be challenging for promotion, shouldn't you? Um, are we expecting to see our friends wearing yellow back in the Premier League in a year's time? Well, I think this is this is a football question rather than a football finance question. And, and I know nothing about football. Um, <laughs> but what I would say is I think there's there's a greater chance of that being the case in in in, uh, in respect of Norwich. Um, I, I think for their, their their business model, their their abil their their ability to generate revenues um, from other sources is is greater than that of Watford. Um, Watford, uh, which, again, I, I, I saw Brighton play both Norwich and Watford last season. Watford were without doubt the, the worst side that, that I've seen in the Premier League for, for a fair while. Um, they, they'd given up. And also looking at some of the comments coming out of the dressing room at the end of the season, um, there was a lack of harmony in the dressing room. So um, I, th I think Norwich are a well-run club. They've they've got a they've got a, a large fan base by by Championship standards. And, and so that's twenty three thousand season tickets, Kerry. Yeah, and that's impact. You know, and I know as an Ipswich fan, you don't want to hear mm. that. That impacts their ability to go up as well. Mm. Um, they 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 will be planning to to perhaps let one or two players go, but I don't think there were that many that were outstanding last season. Uh, Matt, Max Aaron's a be the one, won't it? Yeah, and I, yeah. I think they could cash in on Campwell if someone will pay. Yeah, yeah. So somebody says he looks very like Amanda Staveley. <laughs> never been seen in the same room together. I, I, don't, um, I don't think he's had any work done, has he? I'm not, say, I'm not suggesting for one second Amanda Staveley has. I'm just no. saying Todd Campwell hasn't, Kieran. No, okay. Is that legal um, proof? <laughs> um, so I, I, think, I think Norwich will be competitive. Um, remember, yeah, I... We, 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 we've been through sort of a, a bit of a men in black phase in life that we, we spent a year and a half or a year and a quarter in the middle of the, the biggest crisis in our lifetimes in the form mm. of the pandemic. And that hit football clubs and it hit football clubs in the championship worst of all, because clubs in leagues one and two got zero financial support in terms of grants and loans from uh, the Premier League. Now, the Premier League did offer some support to clubs in the Championship um, in terms of agreeing to pay the interest on loans to to allow the, the Championship clubs to, to repay um, outstanding tax liabilities. Um, although, for some reason, Derby County decided they didn't want to take out the loan. I have no idea why. No idea. Perhaps, perhaps Mel Morris has got a, a sensible answer for that. Um, so... Um, those clubs have have suffered from a year and a quarter of loss of match day income, and therefore clubs that are in receipt of parachute payments relatively have got an even bigger financial advantage, which I think was a major contributory factor to, to what we saw during the pandemic mm -hmm. in, in respect of, um, of of the clubs bouncing back up again. Um, so pa parachute payments are a very, very clumsy solution to the problem of what happens if you go from generating a hundred million pounds of TV money in a year to seven. Yeah. And I've, 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 you'll be pleased to hear I've kind of softened and I've, I'm far closer to your view on this now than the militant view I had maybe when we first sort of started speaking. And I, I try and say to people, Kieran, yeah, you can, you can, because you get, oh, scrap them, do this, do that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, that's one thing that's not going to change the 18 things we need to change to uh, swap the Christian Perslow's cliff edges down to a smoother slope, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm with you entirely there. And, and, and the, the much broader issue in terms of distribution uh, is not being addressed because why are these clubs being relegated straight away? Yeah, if, if there's if people say people people are just focusing on them being promoted, but then they're getting relegated in the first season of going up to the Premier League. So therefore, they, there's something wrong in the Premier League as well with regards to revenue distribution. There's something wrong in the Championship. Yep, 
And there's also something wrong in League One because we've got at Rotherham, as you said, are the Norwich of you know we've got we've got Wigan effectively doing the same as Watford. So so why is this happening? Well, it's because the clubs in the Championship they have bullied the clubs in Leagues One and Two in exactly the same way that the Premier League has bullied the clubs in in the Championship. The clubs in the Championship get eighty percent of the EFL TV deal. The clubs in League One only get 12%. The clubs in League Two get 8%. So I've I've put together countless spreadsheets with changing the numbers, changing the parameters. And, and here's the problem, Ben. If you redistribute money, not everybody can have more money. No. <laughs> That's what redistribution means. Well, and by and, definition, Kieran, the ones that are making the most are going to get less, yeah. Yeah. And... People say, yes, we want a sustainable game. We want a more competitive game. We like the idea of competitive balance. Um, and, and, it's, and it's also the same is that if you, uh, I'm, I'm not part of political, you say, you know, you know, is, is there a case for having more money invested in education? Is there a case of having more money invested in the health service? People say, yes, yes, yes. We, you know, we, we believe in education. We believe in the health service. But, but now, none of it now costs pay us more money. taxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, we don't want that. No, we, we want it for free. Yeah, we, yeah. we um, and and this this is the problem. So yeah, I, I talked. I'm, I've got a Manchester United podcast in about forty five minutes, um, and uh, I'll be talking to them. And yeah, this will be saying. But but ev- when when people talk about redistribution, this is what everybody does. They look to see who's earning more money than them. So Manchester United, they bitch about Chelsea and Manchester City. Liverpool bitch about Manchester United, and and they, they ignore the fact that Liverpool generate three times as much money as as Leicester or Palace or Brighton. Um, so so, so the, the, the inability or the unwillingness of people within the game to take a big step back and then ask themselves this question. Now, you know, I've I've worked with I've worked with politicians, I've worked with the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. Yeah, you know, I think I've been fairly open about that. And I keep asking this question, what is your objective? What do you want to achieve? And nobody has given me an answer. Because I, I, I can write you a spreadsheet solution. You tell me what your objectives are. Mm. I say, oh, we want something to be fairer. Okay, but then you've got to define fair. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not advocating some form of uh, you know, uber socialist utopia where every club no, gets neither. the same me amount neither. of money. Um, I, I think those clubs, which which have been historically successful, which have invested in infrastructure, um, should should reap the rewards of that. But what we have seen is that those clubs have actually used their power. They've used the threat of Super League historically to extract more and more concessions and more and more money out of the smaller clubs. And now we have this. Well, you know, we know who the top four are going to be next season. 